Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I'm the Strategy Professor, and today we're doing another coaching session. So special thanks to Ace DJ for the generous donation. We're going to be looking at a Bronze 4 um, Lee Sin jungle game. So I want to preface this by saying I am not a Lee Sin expert. I have only played a handful of Lee Sin games in my lifetime. But I do think I'm in a position to offer some helpful advice here because uh, I specialize in macro. I work a lot and think a lot about rotations, objective control, and such. And Lee Sin, um, really any jungler, uh, the success is going to be largely predicated on your ability to um, identify your team's win condition and execute that win condition. And so I think that um, I can still offer some really good advice, even if I don't know exact technical details about which paths might be optimal um, and things like that. So I do think, or like super technical stuff about how to like, um, you know, cancel different uh, animations to squeeze a little bit more DPS out in fights and things like that. So I do think that my advice will be helpful, hopefully, even though I'm not at least an expert, but I just want to throw that out there for anyone that's watching this, like expecting someone to be like, you know, a, a Lisa and guru commenting on this. That's not the case. It's really going to be more of uh, macro focused and just trying to help um, Ace figure out how to uh, how to improve his jungle macro play. Okay, and as usual with all of our reviews, you can find um, a link in the description to the uh, Google Doc itself if you want to read through it. And you can also find timestamps if you just want to skip straight into the game and watch that and not worry about the early stuff. So we're going to do a, a really quick op.gg review at the very beginning. Then we're going to talk about the pregame very briefly. Then I'm going to watch the game and take some physical notes. Um, while it's loading up, I guess I'll grab a, a notebook. I don't know where my notebook ran off to. But we'll figure that out here in a second. Um, I'll take some physical notes. And then uh, at the end, we'll bring it all together in kind of this post-game chat. All right. Um, and then uh, at the end, if you're interested in watching more coaching sessions, you can find the playlist here. You can find a bunch of champion guides that I have here. Um, and if you have any questions about anything that you see or you would like to get a coaching session for yourself, um, then just email me at strategyprofessor.gmail.com. If you're brand new to the channel, I am a su support specialist. So I mostly do support on the channel, although occasionally I do guides and content for other roles as well. Okay, let's go ahead and get in here. Um, now, as Lee Sin, you should be placing a lot of wards uh, because uh, for several reasons. Number one, Lee Sin is predicated on um, having intel about your enemy and making appropriate choices. So he's a very good counter jungler early. He can be very aggressive and he's a very good counter ganker. Um, and so you really need to have information on your allies or on your enemies rather in order to optimize your play. So unlike some other junglers out there that can just relatively farm it up you know like master yi doesn't want to invade or um he doesn't have to worry about counter ganking and stuff like that as much early he just wants to farm 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 and just sneak dragons uh and stuff like that lee sun is not that you can't just farm with lee you have to be proactive in the early game because that's when he's strongest he falls off late game he's not that great if the game goes longer than 25 minutes um so you really need to try to close out as fast as you can and you need intel to do that the second reason is that of course he has the warthog Right, so that's every ward that you have uh, basically gives you an extra flash because you can just jump to that ward. Um, so really, you should be placing a lot of wards. Um, and it looks like you did a, a pretty good job with this. I say for supports in general, you know, you should have one ward per minute. For a jungler, maybe one ward every two minutes, but especially because you have Tracker's Knife, you should be putting down a lot of wards. Um, and yeah, and as far as control wards, you should be buying a lot of control wards. You know, I say one per five minutes is, is good, but you need control wards not only for vision, but because they offer you uh, a way to shut out enemy vision, which is good for what you want to do. So if you want to invade, you want to make sure they don't know you're invading so they don't send help, right? Um, or, you know, just anywhere. If you're trying to gank, if you're trying to sneak bears or dragons or whatever, you just want to shut out vision. And especially because Lisa in transitions from kind of a um, uh, solo kill type of champion early in the game into a utility champion needs to flank later in the game where you want to try to get behind enemy lines and kick um, uh, vulnerable targets into the rest of your team. So you often want to play Lee. So he transitions from like this uh, early game damage powerhouse usually into more of a utility 
uh, initiator in the late game. So you need to have really good vision control to do that so they don't see you coming. So that's pink wards help you out a ton with that. You need to, similarly, you need to switch over to sweeper. I know it's nice to have the ward trinket. Uh, and, you know, maybe a lot of people keep that ward trinket throughout the whole game. Uh, I guess he does. I've, let me see. I have been looking at some uh, pro builds. It's kind of split. Some of them get sweeper and some of them keep their ward trinket. Um, obviously, the ward trinket has extra utility for Lee Sin because it gives you an extra jump. It gives you a lot of extra jumps. So that's good. But you are sacrificing vision control if you do that. So, um, you know, it's up to you. Looks like a lot of Lee Sins do opt for the, uh, the trinket ward. But if you have tracker, I don't know. I guess you can go either way, but I would I would err on the side of sweeping because especially in bronze, people aren't going to respect what they don't see. So if they don't see you on the mini map, um, then it should be relatively easy to um, pick people off and kill them because they won't expect that. Oh, you could actually be there, even though they can't see you. Right? They just think, oh, it's darkness, nobody's there. So people will overextend, and that'll give you good lane, lane ganking opportunities. Um, if you sweep out wards. So I would switch over to a sweeper once you get your tracker's knife, but you know, it's it's up to you. It seems like the jury's kind of out on that one. Um I recommend the following runes for Lee. You basically have this, it's just 80 reds, um, attack speed quints, it's standard for almost all 80 champions in the jungle, and then armor yellows. So that's very standard. That's basically every jungler <laughs> that's AD in the jungle. Um, what's a little more, uh, variable are the blue ones. So you can either get CDR. I've seen several people do that. Um, give you faster ultimates primarily so that you can make more plays in the mid game. You can get magic resist, which is really standard if they have a uh, dangerous magic champion. So I think that was be what I would do in this game because you're up against a Kali. Ooh, I don't expect her to give you a lot of trouble, um, early on, but and Vagar, who will, you know, do a lot of damage. So I think that Magic Resist is probably where I would go. If they don't have much magic on their team to worry about, then you might want to switch over to attack speed. But in general, I think Magic Resist is probably the best, and I'm pretty sure that's what you get. Um, see if OP.GG wants to respond. Sometimes this site's pretty squirrely. Okay. Um... Yeah, that's basically what you have. You throw in one extra attack damage on the Quint instead of an attack speed. Whatever, that's fine. Okay. Um, as far as build order, I would go Tracker's Knife, um, Warrior Enchant, Black Cleaver, and then something defensive. And that's pretty standard on virtually everybody. This is pro builds, by the way, so this is what a lot of the top end players are doing. This is not always what you want to do with every single champion is copy exactly what the pros do. But I think it's a good place to like start and think critically about why they're building what they're building and then figure out what's going to work for you. But it's a good place to start. Um, and I think what they build is probably going to be pretty similar for the most part. And you get a good comparison among all kinds of different pros. So you get to see a whole bunch of different perspectives on it. Like you can use something like OP.GG. They have something that's based on like Platinum Plus, what like the aggregate data is. But you can't really see individual matches on there. So with pro builds, one thing that I like is you can say, oh, well, why did he go this build? Why did he go Spirit Massage, for example? That looks weird. Well, you can click on it, and you can see when he gets it in terms of timing, and you can also see what the game was. So why would he get that? Maybe Katarina was really fed. Um, maybe he was really worried about Zack. So if they're getting kind of an unusual build, if you're like, why did he get Mercury Treads? And you can go in there and look at it and see, okay, this is how the game was going down. I can see his runes. I can see his masteries, his, you know, how he leveled up his skills, the build order that he got for this game. So then you can kind of get a clear picture of why people get certain items. Whereas when you use aggregate sites like, um, I'll just go ahead and use OP.GG. If we look at like stats, let's look at champions. So you can go to this uh, and use things like, uh, Lee's almost always near the top. I guess he's fallen out of favor. Wow, really? No way. Am I just overlooking him? Lee is almost always a top 10 play jungler. Oh, that's for top. 
I was like, there is no way. Yeah, he's the most played jungler. I was like, there is no way. People love to play Lisa, and there is no way he's not a top 10 most played jungler. It doesn't even matter if he's good or not. People will just play Lee Sin. Which, by the way, he's probably the hardest jungler in the game to play. So he's very, very difficult to play. So, like, you can use this and you can see, okay, here are core builds. You know, all of them are getting Black Cleaver. Like, this is very similar to what pros are doing. You know, they do Warrior, Cleaver, Deadmans. But as you can see, it's almost always Warrior, Cleaver, something defensive. Okay, and this is mirrored with what the pros do um, as well. So that's kind of the definitive, what you want to do is Lee. Just a question of which defensive item you get. But with this, it'll tell you aggregate win percentages, but you can't see why people get different things. So you won't know, okay, well, when should you get Sterix Gage? When should you get Randuance or Maw or uh, Dead Man's Play? You, you don't know, right? So you just, you could kind of think about it on your own, but if you look at um, pro builds, you can actually see those different contexts that I mentioned before. So you can, I would use a combination of both of these if you want to look, but I think that pro builds is a little more helpful um, because you can see context. Okay. Um, and this can kind of be deceiving too. So um, let me see if I can find an example here. So like this has a 70% win rate, for example, which is like warrior cleaver guardian angel. And you might think, oh, well that's the build I should definitely go because it's 70%. But you don't know the context behind why people build this. So the reason it might be 70% is people might build this when they're already really far ahead. Like that might be the context. So, you know, if you get these two items and your team, you know, the score, your team has like 25 kills and they have six and you're up like five towers or something like that. They might get Guardian Angel just to make sure that they don't throw. Right. Whereas someone might do something more risky like a... um. I don't know, Asterix Gage, or, you know, maybe they'll do something like Maw Malmortius when they're really far behind, when they're mid, like the enemy mid laner is just huge and they just want to make sure they don't die um, to an enemy mid laner being huge, then maybe that's why they would get Maw Malmortius. I don't know for sure, but that's just some important sort of things to think about when you're looking at these builds like this is that you want to think about why why would they do that and then if you see a huge win percentage just think well why is that and it's probably because they're really far ahead whenever they get that item already and so it's not the item itself that's giving them that huge win percentage it's that they're already in a really good position when they buy that item typically okay um all right so with all of that you know i think tracker warrior cleaver defensive item for this game, I mean, we'll have to see how it unfolds. You know, I can't give you a cookie cutter build. Um, I'll comment as we're in the game moving through, but just kind of looking at the uh, op.gg. If it loads up here. Maw would probably be pretty good. You could, if Vagar gets big, you could get a Quicksilver Sash. Might be pretty good. Get a quick silver sash um, into uh, scimitar later on, but I think Maw or Quicksilver would probably be good here. Quicksilver is just excellent into Vagar because there's a very high probability you're going to get stunned as Lee because you're going to have to jump in and try to kick people back. Um, so I think a QSS would be pretty optimal here. Okay, is this one? Um. Yeah, QSS would be pretty because they have um. What their support has teleport. Anyways, uh, they have um a lot of crowd control between Nautilus and Vagar. So I would consider getting a QSS as your third item. Um, now I if you want to go for an extra offensive item, like the reasoning behind Black Cleaver, is because it gives you a lot of uh cooldown reduction which means you're going to get more ults because that's what Lee Sin's all about are those ults and so having that extra cooldown reduction is huge and then also it has more utility so it shreds armor which helps out your ADC and any other your ergot anyone else who's gonna do damage although ergot himself is probably going to get cleaver yeah so maybe you decided you didn't want cleaver because ergot had it I still think it's worth getting it also helps make you a little bit tankier because it gives you that health because you're going to need some survivability so the Black Cleaver health on that combos really well with whatever your um, defensive item is going to be, typically. So, 
you know that that's why people go cleaver because it has it gives you damage but it has that extra utility of armor shred and health on it and we said applies that shred really quickly because everything that's physical damage applies it not just auto attack so you know you queue somebody you connect with the queue auto a couple of times and then do your uh you know palm smash or whatever and they're going to be at full um full stacks so they're a very good item on lee the reason why you wouldn't go um Hydra is because Lee Sin already has a lot of, uh, he already has a lot of lifesteal built into his kit. Like he has 30% lifesteal um, in his, I think it's Iron Will. Yeah, gains bonus lifesteal for four seconds. So, you know, you already have a lot of lifesteal built in your kit, so you don't really need more. If you want to go for a more offensively build, you should go for Duskblade. That's what a lot of pros do, and they're pretty far ahead. This is like the most offensive, like powerhouse damage. It also gives you the cooldown reduction. So, um, yeah, and it helps you with vision control. So it helps you black out and see other wards, which once again, vision control is huge for Lee. So I think Dustblade is really the go-to item if you want a third damage item, if you're really far ahead. Like Uzi here had 13 kills, and so he just wanted more damage. So if you're really far ahead, instead of getting that defensive item, you could go for a Dustblade and... You know, that's where you want to be. A lot of champions that um, have really high damage abilities, like Lee Sin with his Q, with his R, all of that stuff, the caster 80s, as they call them, like Graves, Lee, Kha'Zix, Rengar, all these champions, typically Zed, they want Lethality instead of Raw AD because their abilities already do so much damage. Um, and so Lethality is key. Especially against squishy targets, targets that aren't going to build a lot of armor. And no one on their team is going to build armor, except for maybe Nautilus. So you should have a heyday, you know, going in and just completely one-shotting people if you go Dustblade. So if you want more damage, I would go Dustblade. It's also, I believe, cheaper than um, Hydra. So Hydra is really just for lane dominance. And with some champs, some very specific champions like Fiora... Um, I can't even think of any other people outside of Fiora that would want this in lane. Most people, if you go Hydra, you go Titanic Hydra. Um, because it's an auto attack reset primarily, and it helps you clear waves a lot faster, and it gives you tankiness. So you could go Titanic Hydra if you want a little more tankiness, but the Hydras are usually not items that you see on Lee that often. Okay, uh, let's see. So yeah, that's it. As far as masteries go, uh, a couple of changes I would adjust here, and then we'll get into the game here in just a moment. I just wanted to get a lot of the, kind of this pre-game stuff out of there because there's a lot of opportunities for some variation there that I just wanted to explain in depth. Um, once again, you have a lot of lifesteal already, so I don't think you need that. I would go over here and get natural talent. Um, I would give you more AD as the game progresses, and that's really powerful. Uh, here, yep, you have Fury. For some reason, I thought you went uh, Sorcery, but you do have Fury, which is correct. Here, I would go Assassin. This is going to help you invade and do more damage to Akali. Like, a little bit longer on neutral buffs is okay, but I, I still think you should probably rather get Assassin. Um, and then this stuff looks good. So yeah, just switch this over to here, and then switch this over to Assassin, and that should be good to go. Okay, let's talk about kind of your game plan. So I mentioned some of this. You need to punish Akali really hard in the early game. So you need to ward her jungle, get over there, and beat her up before she gets to 6. She shouldn't be able to fight you early on. She just doesn't have enough damage. Um, itemization is going to be really bad on Akali early on. As far as I know, unless there's some super like awesome Akali build out there that I'm not aware of. So ward her red, see where she starts. I say red because oftentimes there's less people in the red side of the jungle. When you're on blue side, like they all just hover around blue and help her with golems typically. Oftentimes the top laner won't even sit in red, around the red. So just ward her red area. You can ward raptors or you can ward over the wall at the red. Uh, but it's just safer to ward there to see where she starts. There's probably like a 99% chance she's going to start blue. Um, but just ward it just in case. And, you know, I want you to go over there and either start at your blue and then go over and fight her at red. Um, just let her get the red buff low and just like hide out in a bush, especially in bronze. Nobody wards or checks that bush. So um, let me pull up a map here real quick. Okay, it's kind of an older 
older image here, but that'll work. Okay, so what I want you to do, you are red side, right? Let me just double check that before I say all of this. Or you are blue side, yeah. Okay. Um, a lot of jungle is pathing and just like understanding different timings. Like I said, I, I don't have an expert knowledge of that stuff, but I can give you some pretty good advice on it. Um, on just kind of this really basic level here. So you want to walk up here, get a ward uh, on her red right here. You can try to walk up and ward this if you want to. Um, it's a little more dangerous because the top laner might see you, but right, right here you can ward this. Um, if you're really scared to like check this bush or to walk in very far over here, you could like ward this. But I think just walking up to here and warding over this wall is probably a pretty good option. And then you would start your blue and then come over here and just stand here. And while she's doing her red, um, you can queue over it. And then as you're going towards it, smite it to take it from her. Or um, you could come over here and just stand like right on the edge here and then just queue her and just kill her and just don't even worry about um, smiting the red buff once she gets low. Um, or alternatively, you can just take this right from the start and then just go back and get your blue after it. So it's up to you. Either you can try to fight and kill her in the jungle, or you can um, just take her red, rotate back, get blue, and then rotate to your red. So just three buffer, as they say. Now, that means that you're going to be on opposite sides of the map, though. So she's going to be up here with nothing to do, and she'll probably just gank really early and just try to make up for the deficit. So And you won't be there to help with that. So, you know, it's up to you. So I, I would get in her face and fight her, probably. I would just fight her at red. But if you want to be a little more cautious, you could just take it. And then she'll be top side, and then you could actually make a play bot side, maybe, and get some kills. Now, I suspect that Lux and Caitlyn are going to push, so you may not have good opportunities in the early game to get to bottom side, but <clears throat> that is an option that you would have. Um... Yeah, so you should have solid kill threat in all of these lanes. Um... Urgot probably has the highest kill threat early on, if you can make some plays up there. Uh, you're probably not going to have a lot of good kill opportunities bot lane. You might, like, what would happen is Kate ideally is going to push them in, and then you could rotate in from the river, or you can, like, walk up the lane and get into their bush. Um, Misfortune doesn't have a lot of great escape, so if you get on her, that's really good, but they don't have much crowd control. Lux has a bind, but kind of sketchy if she's going to hit it or not um and it doesn't look like the enemy team really wants to fight that much if nautilus had ignite a lot of times if you see the bottom um support has ignite that means they're going to try to fight and get kills early so that means you can exploit that you can be there and when they go all in you can counter gank and kill them so if they have ignite they want to fight you can go down there and that's some potential opportunities to sneak in some uh, uh ganking and kills when they try to go all in um, but because he has teleport, they're probably not going to fight. Although, maybe. I don't know. Uh, mid lane, you can maybe kill Vagar, but that's going to be a little harder. So I think your best opportunity early on is going to be try to work the uh, the Jack's top. And then in the mid game, after you get your level 6, try to go down and get Misfortune by flanking behind her and kicking her into your team. Uh, what else? What else? You need to try to win early as much as you can. They're going to snowball harder later. Vagar scales really well, so does um, Akali and Jax. So you need to try to close this out as fast as you can. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get in here. Let me put the sound back on. All right, now I'll go ahead and start us up. Okay, and I'm just going to grab... Uh, my notebook really quick. I don't know where it ran off to, but I'm just going to grab that for about 10 seconds. I'll just uh, let the viewers watch Lee in really quick, and then we'll get in here. Boom. There we go. Got it. <laughs> I just left it out in the hallway. All right. Yeah, I really wish you would abuse her red. Uh, it looks like you're just gonna go the standard red to blue. Um, you know, if you have a, if you're facing something that's really weird and weak early on, like an Akali, you really, really need to punish that. That's what Lee's good at. He's a the punisher early game. He's not the 
toughest kid on the block like he used to be early game because they've nerfed him several times, but he's still really good. Uh, you need to be pinging your team to back up, too. Yeah, just tell him to get out of there. You guys don't have vision here. You don't need to do this. I mean, what if they're all, like, in this bush? Yeah, Caitlyn's getting flanked. Run. Yeah, don't. Just just leave, just leave, just leave. Leave, your red's coming up. Just leave. Just leave. Uh, you need to be pinging these people back. Uh, I would have flashed after that, actually. Get that auto. She was literally one auto away, and you know she doesn't have heal. Misfortune's not close enough for heal. So I would have uh, I would have flashed after for the auto. Like, I would have left. To be clear, I would have left a long time ago, because I think that this is just way too risky. Huh. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess that worked out. I mean, that was just super risky. Like, so, the problem is, y'all are in their jungle. They just have a lot more... Uh, a lot more flexibility with what they can do, because it's their jungle. Like, they can leave, you know, and go hide at their tower. They can come out of all these different places where you don't have vision. Um, so, I mean, it worked out in the end, but it was really, really dangerous just randomly walking through here. So you need to ping your allies back. Just do not let them do that. Like, it worked out. Um, I would just smite this for health right now. You know Akali's not going to come invade you. And just smite it for health, man. You got smite, right? I think you can do it if you just smite it for health. Hmm. Okay, so what you want to do, this is a good chance to talk about this with jungle camps especially. Every time with Lee Sin, every time you use an ability, um, are you... I don't know if you, like, had to answer your door or something or what. But, like, you know, like, try to... Or maybe something like you were talking to somebody next to you or something. But, yeah, try to buy faster than that and just go. Like, were you waiting on an item or something? You, you don't want to wait that long. Um, just get something and get out of there. Like, you really need to... No longer than 5 to 10 seconds buy. And that's tops. Really, you need to be out of there in, like, 3 seconds or less. Okay, let me see how you handle this. Now, okay, so what you need to do, every time you use an ability, um, he gets extra attack speed and he gets extra um, regeneration. And so, especially when you're doing jungle camps, you need to use an ability, attack twice, and then use an ability, attack two more times. And so you need to constantly cycle through your abilities so you always have uptime. Um... See, like, right there, how you immediately followed with your Q? You need to hit it. Hit him with your Q. Attack twice. And then follow up. And then attack twice more. But you're, you're just using your abilities, like, whenever they're up. And that's slowing down your, uh, your clear speed a lot. And whenever you're fighting enemies, you want to do that, too. Whenever possible. Sometimes with Lee, you just have to use your abilities. But, yeah, so you should go up and auto twice. And then connect. And then I think you're using both of your um, W's in a row there. But yeah, that's that's a big one. Because that, that will help you out a lot in terms of your clear speed. And just when you connect with enemies, like if you hit them with a Q, then walk up, you know, auto them twice. You just always want to be weaving in, whenever possible, your auto attacks. Two auto attacks between every ability. Um... 
Okay, so I'm going to say ping enemies back. Use smite to heal if necessary. If you know the jungler's not going to invade you and you just are in a tough situation like you were level 1. Okay, I saw ours. Okay, yeah, you got her. There you go. Hunter down. Uh, Stay on her. Stay on her. Don't let her run away. No. You gotta stick on her, dude. Oh, goodness. Okay, let's... Let's rewind just a little bit here. Okay, so... The thing about Lee Sin is you can reveal invisible people with your, uh, your E your uh, palm or whatever so just walk up to her just start autoing her just keep autoing now palm smash obviously you want to hit her with the Q but you need to use your palm smash there it reveals invisible targets for four seconds so it's great against Vayne, Akali, Twitch yeah so you just need to stay on her just auto attack and force her to do something else like, once she starts running, then hit her with the Q. But yeah, just do the safeguard to yourself. Auto twice. Do the second part of your safeguard. To slow her down, and then just keep autoing her until she flashes away. Once she flashes, then you Q her and follow her. And then, once she tries to go invisible like that, use your palm smash. To reveal her, and then just keep beating her up. Shield to him, shield to him. Okay, just walk up to this guy. So I'm writing down weave autos between abilities. Use E to reveal a collie. I'm not sure if you knew that was um, part of E, but yeah. This has historically made Lee Sin one of the best counters in the game to invisible champions. He can reveal them. Okay, so one thing, I think, doesn't the second the second part of your E, I think, applies a slow? There you go, yeah. So, you need to get the slow on there first. Whenever Scuttle is slowed, he takes more damage. And so your rotation should be walk up, um, E the Scuttle, auto, auto, use your second E for the slow, auto, auto, Q, auto, auto, connect with your Q, auto, auto. And it probably should be dead. Yeah, I would walk to the back here. Uh, you don't even... I guess you can ward that if you need to, but I would almost just hold on to it. Ooh. Yeah, I would have had your potions ticking a bit faster there, probably. Because you know you're going to need them early on, so just go ahead and use them. Okay, good. Uh, wrap this way, wrap this way, this way. Ask them where wards are. Um, so just type out, like, where wards, or just, like, wards question mark, and then just put question marks on the map. Just ask them. They may not know, but they might know. So just ask them, and then you won't waste your time. Just say wards question mark, and then just question mark a couple of places. Or just, like, any wards. Any wards bot. You can look and see, too, like, the likelihood there's going to be wards. So, like, if there's not a sight stone, they may not have them. A better way is you can use pink wards as well, or sweeper. Okay, yeah, you, sh you might go... No, 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 not, not, with, not with Nautilus. You need to run, 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 run. Yeah, you're gone. As soon as Nautilus is there, you need to get away and, like, just drop a ward and just leap to it and run away immediately. Because Nautilus is a real problem. He has a lot of crowd control. Okay. Um, I'm going to speed this up a little bit here. Okay, so... 
survey the lanes. Don't forget, you need to just look at look at tab every now and then. Just see like who is uh, who's doing well, who's not. Now I can see more than you can here, but just look and just see who's strong. Like where do you have kill threat? Uh, like Caitlyn, for example, is very strong right now. She's up 30 CS. So you always want to work strong lanes. Don't work your weak lanes. A lot of times people will cry. They'll say, oh, help me. Like, you know, the top lane that's like 0 and 5 or something. Do not help them. Just don't do it. I guess part of being a jungler is you have to figure out a ways to convince people. Say, I'll be up there soon. I'm going to, uh, you know, and you don't want to make them sound bad. But just say, um, Caitlyn's really strong right now. Uh, let me take down this tower, and then we'll come up and help you. Just say something like that. So, you know, you don't want to say, I'm not going to come up there because you're doing awful. You know, you don't want to say that. Because people have very fragile egos. Um, as I'm sure you know. <laughs> you know, and if you ever play a game of League of Legends, you you'll quickly discover that people have very fragile egos. Um, the Vagar is very difficult. For Lee Sin to gank. Like, you can maybe kill Vagar, but you have to one-shot him because his little cage is gonna stop you. So it's kind of a waste of time. Like, this is the worst lane you could be trying to work right now. I think that bot lane is really good. Like a good lane to gank. And I think that top lane is a really good gang lane to gank. I said, I, I feel like top is the best. Ergot should have a lot of damage. And Jax doesn't have a lot of great escapes if you kick him. Speaking of kick, I haven't seen you use that yet. You need, you really need to use that every time it's off cooldown. And you have no vision in there. Like, we have no idea where Akali is. Like, you know how you muscled her out? Like, you didn't convert the kill on her, but you muscled her up, you know? Like, she lost her raptors because of that. Go over there and just sit in her jungle. Like, just start dropping wards. Like, ward her raptors. Um, you know, ward up here. Ideally, if you can figure out, like, the spawn times on camps, you should get that into your mind and just, like, just think, I'm going to go contest. You know, I'm going to go contest these raptors. I don't know the exact spawn times on these um, camps. That's something that you should definitely research if you want to main jungle. All right, yeah, come over here and help this. Right here, right here. Right here, right here. No, here, here, here. Get over here. From here to here. Walk. Come on. <laughs> Come here. Oh. Okay, you you got you got to work on the map awareness a little bit here. Like just a good way to um to think of this is like you want to watch your mini map almost as much. Okay, yeah, right here. Now kick him. Kick him. Okay, y'all got him. Okay, let me let me pause this for a second. Okay, so you need to watch the mini map almost as much as you watch um, the normal screen. In fact, as a jungler, I would say you probably want to watch the mini map even more than you watch because you don't need to watch like what's going on at golems, right? Like you know what's going on at golems, or you should when you practice a, a you know a champion more so like when you're in a lane you know people could engage on you they could fight you you know you you've got like the cs you might miss it you can't miss cs in the jungle it's unlikely someone's going to fight you i mean maybe like obviously you want to pay attention to your core screen some but as a jungler you have the freedom to look at your mini map a lot more to plan what your next moves are going to be because you don't have someone in your face all the time trying to contest you for stuff and you can't miss cs in the jungle so you don't have to focus as hard on last hitting because you, you're just gonna get it right like it doesn't just disappear if uh you don't do enough damage to it so you need to be watching the mini map a lot more so just that's something that i really want you to focus on here is just look at the mini and just see what can i do and if you ever see a fight breaking out like that in your own river like just anywhere and you're remotely close to it i want you to go to that fight just stop what you're doing go to the fight I know there are some junglers out there, I've seen some YouTubers that say, you know, always finish your camp before you go to stuff. I'm going to say false. Do not do that. I mean, I'm not a jungle expert, but it, especially at this level of play at bronze, you need to go make plays with people. Because not only does that give you a lot more gold if you convert plays, it tilts people. 
right? So if you come over and let's say this Jax almost had this Urgot dead, I could say it was a really close fight and then you show up and kill him at the last second, he's gonna be so mad. He's gonna be raging in his jungler. Oh my God, their jungler's 10X better than ours. This is awful, I'm AFK. You know, it happens on our team all the time, right? Where people will, you know, try to blame you as the jungler or they'll, you know, try to blame somebody. So if you just start racking up kills, if you can get them early on, instead of jungle camps, not only is it more gold, but it's really good, um, or it's really bad, I should say, for the psyche of the enemy team. Good for your team morale. Because then they'll think, man, we got a good jungler. He's here doing stuff all the time. And bad for them, because they'll think, man, the enemy jungler is totally destroying us. So you want to make plays. You want to gank, make plays, get towers. So right now you should actually be up here after you guys make that play and get this tower. Like he's full health. You're kind of low, but um, I don't know. I mean, I guess there's an argument. You don't have vision of a calling. So if you had vision in here, if you had like a control ward sitting right here, in addition to a ward right here, then you guys could actually push and take this tower because you would know where a is. You wouldn't have to be scared of her. But since you don't have vision, you kind of do have to be a little scared that she could show up and kill you. Maybe. I don't know. I feel like you might be able to lifesteal off of these and take this tower. But yeah, so that's that's a big one, is watch the mini-map more. Watch mini more. And react. React faster. Um... So another thing here is what you should do, and this is, you need to learn this rotation or this like paradigm of Lee Sin, right? So whenever you're going up to make a play like that, Lee Sin's signature thing is you get behind people and you kick them. Okay, that's, that's his whole thing. So how you wanna do this, let me back it up here. Okay. So he's pushing this wave right now. Kennen actually rotated up here. I didn't even see Kennen rotate up there. Um, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Now, you do go for this kill, but I would actually just wait. Um, I would, like, maybe sit here and block this wave a little bit. So just come up and just start, like, attacking this wave. Maybe safeguard attack this wave a little bit. And then just wait for this wave to come up. And the reason for that is once this wave comes up and gets tower aggro, then what I want you to do is just walk up to Jax and then just kick him. And then while he's in midair, then you Q onto him and then connect with the Q after that. So that way you're kicking him away and then you're also reconnecting with him. Um, because your Q is an execute also. So it does more damage the lower they are. So when you dragon kick them, then they're going to be a lot lower in health and then you go in for the execute kill. So that's what I would do ideally, is just wait here. Now Jax could jump at you to try to get away. Um, if he does that, you would want to kick him immediately back into Urgot. Um, but I think right now you need to start with just zoning like this wave off since you're full health. Just absorb some of this wave, safeguard, wait until this wave comes up. It'll only take another three seconds to just walk up and kick him. All right, so that's the best thing to do. However... If for some reason you think a call is coming and you need to make this play quickly, then you can go ahead, Q him, but then as soon as you connect with him, then kick him out of the tower. Or like kick him back to Urgot. Um and then run away. So as soon as you come in here, kick him to Urgot, and then just ward hop over this wall or something. And the reason for that is you don't want him to jump away. However, if you do that and Urgot doesn't connect on the kill, then Jax might be able to jump to these minions to get away. Okay, so let's see. So you land it. Yeah, don't auto him when this is going on. I think you can still kick him. I think this just blocks autos. Not 100%, but I'm pretty sure you can still kick him. So, like, right now, you need to try to get on the other side of him and just kick him. You probably would just execute him right now with a kick, honestly. He's so low. I think you could just kick him and kill him. But I would make sure you kick him towards Urgot. Ideally. 
Oh, he does actually get away. No, he doesn't. Ergot hits him. Okay, so he was really close to actually getting away there. Okay, we'll, we'll move on. But yeah, that's something you need to learn with Lee, is you just, ideally, you just want to walk up. Then either flash, like, if you can just walk behind somebody and kick them, that's perfect. Sometimes you might have to flash behind them. Sometimes you might have to ward hop behind them. Um, and then connect with the Q and then follow them. So that's the best combo you can do with Lee. Another popular combo is if you hit them with that Q, go on to them, and then either flash behind them and kick them, if you're coming from the front, or ward hop behind them and kick them. But you need to try to be kicking people back. Now Akali is working bot lane, and this is bad. It's bad for you guys. Because that was your lane that was winning. And... If they take bot lane, then they're going to take tower, and then they're going to take dragon. So you need to come down here and help this bot lane. Because they were pretty far ahead, and now they're really far behind. I know this guy's like, oh, he's spamming. See? Because you came up there, that's what I was just talking about, right? I swear I hadn't watched this before. But because you came up there and ganked him, Jax is freaking out now on the enemy team. He's like, please help me. Lee was just up here. Please. Strike, palm strike, palm strike. You can see her if you just use your E when she does that. It reveals her for four seconds. Okay. Um, what'd you buy? Okay, pretty good. I would go Phage though. All right. Good. Yes. Yes. This is good. This is where I would have put most of your efforts, once you get six. Yeah. Go ahead and get this, then go get Water Drake. You need more vision. Like, this is a huge thing right now, because we... Uh, Lux is not putting up vision. And you, you just, you need to do it as Lee, especially if you have trackers. So put a ward here, take this blue, you know Akali's middle. Put a ward here, put a ward here, and then move and, like, put a pink, like, either on dragon or put it over here. Like, you need more pinks. There's just, there's no vision whatsoever in their jungle. And you guys are really far ahead, so you can just go up and just beat up a Kali anytime you want. And you're crushing her. You know, you're up 30 CS and three kills. You need to just massacre her. Okay, there you go. Good. Kick. Okay. It's on cooldown. All right, go get dragon. Go get dragon. You guys aren't gonna get this, I don't think. Caitlyn's out of mana. Just go get dragon. Just ping them back. Go, go rotate to this. Go rotate to this and get dragon. Yeah, you guys are wasting a lot of time here. So yeah, like technically nothing bad is happening here. But you're not going to accomplish anything, and you, you're you losing opportunity cost. So you could be doing something productive right now, but instead you're just, you know, standing here basically watching Caitlyn farm. As a jungler, you need to be as efficient as you possibly can be at all times. So yeah, you just kind of wandered around. I mean, I just want to show you here real quick. Like, just look at how much time this takes up. Like, I know in the moment you may not really uh, see... Now, sticking around when she's here and stealing camps, that's productive. You're stealing a camp, you're getting some opportunities to kill people, but now, 1240, or 1642, you have no kill threat. Nautilus is just going to sit right here. You don't have enough damage to kill him under lane. You don't know, okay, Lux did put up a ward, but you're literally just sitting here watching her farm. Like, you can't go and hit the tower because Nautilus is too dangerous. I just look. I'm gonna speed it up a little bit here. Is there's a zero percent chance you're gonna kill him? Caitlyn doesn't have any mana. Okay, so that was almost literally a minute. That was 50 seconds of just like chilling, basically right here. So you could have gone back and taken your red golems. You, dragon would have been the major thing. As soon as you get that kill on misfortune, you should have pinged dragon and got this immediately. You could have already had Dragon. You probably would have gotten that in like 15 seconds with Caitlyn. You could have had Dragon. You could have backed. And you could have already been, you know, back at your red buff, potentially, if you did it fast enough. You could have probably been like right here. 
if you got dragon backed and then started walking back towards your red. Now this is really dangerous. Like you just saw a bunch of them walking through here. Remember that Nautilus has just a press R button to CC you. Um, yeah, just get dragon. Get dragon, get dragon, dragon. Like, it's, you need to make it kind of your instinct. As soon as you kill somebody, you need to be thinking, we need to get something right now. And just think what it is. What can we get? Okay, we can't get tower because Nautilus is sitting there. But what can we get? Okay, we can get dragon. Palm strike. <laughs> Yeah, obviously you want to hold on to your kick and just make sure that you're going to have enough damage to execute her. But you know that. I don't need to talk about that too much. Um, but like what you could do here, and you know, if you want to play Lee, honestly, you have to be able to do this kind of stuff. And it's hard. Like Lee Sin's one of the hardest junglers to play. So, you know, I can't do it perfectly. But, okay, you need to be able to hop and kick. So you have wards, right? I can't tell how many you have. Yeah, you do have a ward. Okay. So you've got this on her. So what you need to do, as soon as you connect with your Q, you need to put a ward in this bush, E to that ward, and then kick her backwards into your team. Okay, this is a combo that you have to learn as Lee Sin. This is the bread and butter of good Lee Sin play, and it's hard to do, but you need to be able to do it. All right, so as soon as you connect with this Q, I want you to drop a ward in this bush, press E, and then kick to get to the other side of her, and then kick her back into your team. That is a core Lee Sin combo that you have to be able to do. If she goes invisible, do your palm smash, reveal her, and then kick her back into your team. Okay, so you go for the kick there. That she's at like half health. Very, very low probability. And if you're gonna kick her something like that, you need to at least kick her into a wall. So that she doesn't get to go anywhere. But you know, the best plan is to hop over here and then kick her back this way. Don't kick her over this wall. You need to kick her this way. So yes, that is difficult to do. It is one of, you know, that's what makes Lee one of the more, more difficult champions to play. But you need to be able to do that. Okay. This is why I don't recommend Lee, C Lee Sin necessarily. Um, because he is a very technical champion. He's very fun, obviously. That's why people love to play him, so... But that's something that you just got to practice over and over again. Even if you mess it up, even if you kick him the wrong way every now and then, you just got to keep practicing it until you get it right. Yeah, you need to ping them back. You need to communicate more. Just tell them, like, get out of there. Like, a lot of people won't listen, but there are some people who will listen. Like, sometimes people just get caught up in the moment, you know, when they're playing, and they know what the correct play is, they're just not thinking about it. So they know, oh yeah, I probably should back, but they're just, like, caught up. You know, they're just not thinking. They just see a fight, and they just think they have to fight it. And then if someone just pings and says back up, you're like, oh yeah. I can just back up, you know? So there's a lot of merit to um, communicating with your team. And yes, even, God forbid, typing to them every now and then. I know I, I get people all the time on chat that are just like, you know, just instant mute your whole team. No, don't. Unless they are actually bothering you, distracting you, then you mute them. But other than that, you need to be able to communicate with them.
just type, just say like, wait for me or something. Uh, I don't think you want this guy. Maybe, but no, nah, it's a really tough matchup. Cause he's just gonna block a lot of your stuff. Even though you are ahead of him in terms of gold, just Jax as a champion is just really good at fighting other melee champions. Okay, so be productive with your time, communicate more team. Okay, what do you have? Item-wise. Yeah, I would really like to see you go one more offensive item before you go defensive. The reason is you're just so far ahead, both as a team and you individually. Like, if you had Cleaver there, you would have killed the Akali when you tried to kick her. If you had Phage, you would have killed her. And Phage also lets you stick to people better. So whenever you kill something or deal damage to somebody, uh, you get extra movement speed. So it lets you stick to people better. I mean, Dead Man's does let you rotate a little faster. But I think Cleaver would have definitely served you well right there. Yeah, you need you, you need to get organized with your team here. Like, some people are using Rift, and you're down here, like, doing golems. I would say just get with your team. If they're going to do Rift, if a bunch of people are getting, like, lining up in the middle, just go get with them. Like, you're over here getting blue while they're sieging middle. You know what I'm saying? Like, or, like, while Kennen's over here getting top. You need to get more than just blue. Like, you need to either be with Kennen taking this, or you need to be with them. Like, if you were with them, you guys probably would have won that fight. I mean, you did win it. Just Urgot died, but still, like... Okay, get out of there. Um, so, a core, um, what? Okay. Um, a core thing that I mentioned earlier to, to work on is just work on that minimap awareness. Just understand what is your team trying to do? How do they win? And try to work with them on that. So right now you're really far ahead. It's Golems aren't going to matter. Like blue buff is not going to matter right now. What matters is taking towers and closing out this game. Before something bad happens. So before one of your teammates starts raging. Or before... Um... Uh... Alright. Um... Or before you start throwing. Yeah, so rotate up here. Drop awards here, drop a ward here, drop a ward here. Like, you need to have more wards down. This is where control wards would be really handy, too. Get up here with Ergot and take this. Like, you're putting too high of a priority on these camps. It doesn't matter when you're this far ahead. You need to just get towers and close. Like, Jax is about to show up. And you can double team him and kill him right now, if you're there. Like, imagine if you're right here and you just safeguard over this wall and just start working this Jax. Like, you would have killed him right there and got this tower. But as it stands, Urgot's going to have to run away, probably. Or they just kill him. Yeah. So if you were there, you could have killed him. See what I'm saying? So, like, yeah, jungle camps matter. But when your team's this far ahead, they don't. Really. Not that much. Like, they should be very, very low on the priority list. Like, number one on the priority list is getting towers. Um... Above that is getting vision and threatening objectives. Obviously, if you can get a Baron, that's a high, high priority, but you got to get some kills before that. So, getting towers, creating pressure, like getting picks with your team, and then rotating and getting objectives. That's what matters. Towers are like... You should really only get camps if they're like on the way. If you have like downtime. So if you're waiting on... You know, everybody just bought, and you're trying to go do something else, then go do your camp. Other than that, it doesn't matter. Like, if you were behind in the game, you know, if you were 16 to 31, then yeah, you should hang out, like, defensively, probably, in your own jungle. Keep 
vision and just try to farm camps and farm up. When you're this far ahead, you need to try to close. Which means that you need to kill people. Okay, well, you tried. You tried to go for the kick. Um, but what I want to see, I want to see you either ward hop what I described before, which is where you drop a ward and then E to that ward and then kick backwards. Or if that's still, you know, a little tough while you're learning that, then um, flash. So when you hit that Q on them, just flash to the other side of them and then R, kick them into your team. So I want you to really work on trying to kick uh, the enemy into your team. One way or another. Either use your flash to get to the other side of them or ward hop. It's worth it to use your flash to kill Misfortune there, because if you kill Misfortune, then you have a good chance of either winning the fight outright or of getting really good map position so that you can um, secure vision on Baron or go take a dragon. Okay, this is you need to you need to ping your team back. Like if you want to go do dragon, fine, but you need to get everyone on the same page. Like they're getting a lot of free kills because people are just running around randomly. Like, you guys are pretty far ahead, so you're getting away with it. But there will be a lot of games where, if this keeps happening, you're going to lose those games. Trust me, I know. <laughs> I lose a lot of games the same way. Even when I am trying to tell people, like, direct them, so. But there are a lot of games that I win that I would otherwise lose if I didn't direct them, so. You just have to direct your team. Like, I think you're right to go for Dragon there. But at the same time, you need to get everyone there with you. Okay, so I want you to prioritize closing the game. Ping him back, ping him back. It's okay to get raptors here because people are dead and you're waiting, but you need to ping them so they're not doing it. No, 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 no. Don't go, don't go over there. No, no. You, you need to ping them back or go get with them. You can't be on bot side of the map when Baron's up. They could, in theory, like, if they wanted a five-man run at Baron right now. Like, when they all get together, they could just run up here, kill these two that are off doing their own thing. Like, maybe Nautilus just ults Caitlyn, and then they all just, all five just dogpile her. Kill her. Kill Urgot. Kennen probably tries to run into help. They kill Kennen. And then your bot lane, and they take Baron. Like, that's a very, very likely scenario with how things were going right there. And that would get them back into this game. Yeah, this is so disjointed. Like, you guys, you need to get together. So be on the same page with your team. You need to coordinate. Um, you need to be thinking like Baron right now. You need to get a control ward and come over here and just start working this Baron. Now, every like the the textbook way to close out games is whenever you have an inhibitor down, you push the lane up so that it's in their base. They have to leave someone to defend their base, and then you go get Baron. You just want to make sure it does not get stolen. So if their jungler comes up, just stop what you're doing and kill their jungler. Do not let them come in here for a smite fight. Now in theory, and save your smite, obviously, to last hit Baron. Now in theory, Lee has a very good combo because he has an execute on his Q. You can use your Q and then at the very end, you know, use the second part of your Q right as you smite. And you should be able to outsmite. Um, most other champions that aren't like Cho'Gath or Nunu. Yeah, you're still not going to beat Jax. You, just, you, you can't beat that champion. He just counters you really hard. 
It doesn't matter if his score is whatever it is. Five and seven. I mean, this is, like, you guys are in a pretty good position, but, like, if this game went on for another 10 minutes, I think Jax might be able to take over. Like, it's pretty scary. Jax is a very scary champion. It's just nightmares. This is, like, my, my stream, like, all last night. With stuff like this happening, and my team would lose, where we were up, like, 20 kills. Because, you know... We'd make similar kinds of macro mistakes. Not the exact same kind of stuff that's going on here, but we would we just weren't closing out games. And the game's not won until you see a W on the victory screen, so you you have to get on him. Okay, you won this, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's recap some of this stuff here really quickly. Alright. Um Okay, so the try to avoid level one invades if you don't have vision. You didn't really have a very good, particularly good level one team. Nautilus was going to be stronger if he was actually there. It's just really dangerous. Like, I know you, the results were good. Like, you ended up getting a double kill, but it was extremely dangerous. Like, a much better play would have been just to go invade her red. And either take her red or just go fight her at red. Start your blue and then get her red. Um, that That's such an easy thing to do in bronze, too, because people don't expect it. Everybody starts on the bop side of the map and works at the top. If you switch it up and just beat up at the top side and just kill them in their jungle when they go for their second buff, that's just easy money. Um... Okay, so use your auto attacks between abilities, especially in the jungle. So let me show you just kind of the Lee stuff here. You may or may not know. So that's his passive, his flurry. After using an ability, his next two basic attacks within three seconds gain 40% attack speed, and they give you more energy. So this is what I'm talking about in the jungle. You want to go, you know, Q, auto, auto, finish the Q, auto, auto, you know, safeguard, auto, auto. I think a lot of the rotations are... I guess people probably start off with the Q. They'd go Q, auto, auto. Um, how long does that stay? Next three seconds. So you could probably Q, auto, auto, safeguard, auto, auto, finish your Q, auto, auto. Um, finish your iron will, auto, auto. Something like that. Because remember, your Resonating Strike isn't Execute. So you want to do this whenever they have uh, less damage. So I think Q, Auto, Auto, E, Auto, Auto, and then Reconnect with your Q would probably be the standard bread and butter combo in the jungle. Because they, they're going to be at a lower health when you do your Execute on your Q. Um, but yeah, you need to do your... Um, you need to weave Auto Attacks in between your abilities in the jungle. Um... Yes. Okay. That grants sight of them. Is that true sight? Oh, they changed it. For real? When do they do that? Oh, back in season seven. Okay. Tempest no longer reveals invisible targets. Now only reveals targets. So they changed it at the very beginning of this season. Okay. Okay, fair enough. So you can't reveal Akali anymore. That's sad days. Alright, but I would still just stick with her, as I said before. Now if you hit her with a Q, that does still reveal, but your Tempest no longer reveals. 
Okay, so he's not the same kind of hardcore anti-invisible that he used to be for the first seven seasons. Okay. But nevertheless, I think the Akali play is similar. You just need to stick on her um, and just wait until she leaves that bubble a lot of the times. Okay. Um, what else? Let's so use autos between your abilities. Um... Okay, so the using E to reveal Kali doesn't work anymore. Um, so reacts not only to, um, and that's gonna. So remember, jungle camps are okay, but they aren't as good as getting kills and taking objectives. Okay, so you need to watch your mini map, and if there's a fight breaking out and there's a really high probability you can get a kill on them, like the Urgot fight in the Jackson the River, you need to drop what you're doing at those golems and go get them. Because not only is it gold, but it gives you extra pressure and it tilts the enemy. So if you killed him in the river, you could have rotated up and gotten top tower and then rotated and got the Rift Herald after that with the Urgot. So you could have had a three for one. Especially if you have vision of Akali's jungle. So if you put more vision in her jungle, then you're going to be more confident that you can go for plays like that. Um, okay, so more vision will let you do that with confidence because you know Akali's not going to show up. And just in general, later in the game, you know, there were several times you were either getting a buff or getting golems or whatever, and your the enemy team was just, or your team was just doing something else, right? Like, they were all trying to siege middle, they are using rift middle, um, you just weren't on the same page with them. So, you know, only get those, uh, sorry, I need a, I need a haircut. <laughs> My hair looks pretty awful, so I'm just putting it up lately for the last couple of days. Um... You really need to work on uh, just getting with your team and doing, uh, just being on the same page, right? Just having a more co cohesive. Um... Even if what they're doing is not necessarily optimal, ideally you want to shot call more. So you need to be telling them, okay, look, let's go do this objective. Okay, look, let's siege this. Like, just ping them. Let's go bait Baron. Um, all of this goes hand in hand. You need to try to be more cohesive with the team, get everyone on the same page. You need to be on that page, secure vision control, and use that to gain uh, objectives. So to bait Baron, um, to uh, camp people, just set up bush ganks in the jungle. Um, there are a lot of different things you could do. Try to siege towers. A lot of different things you can do, but it starts with vision and then actually typing and pinging to help your team set up shot calling. Um, and just watching the minimap and interpreting and figuring out what the next thing is you should be doing. And I have videos on this. I have several videos on macro rotations, shot calling. Um, I will recommend my how to support and overview video if you haven't watched that yet. It's on the main uh, channel. And I think that it's got a lot of really good stuff in there that can help you out. Um, yeah, and that's... Oh, the last one that I want to see here is... Okay, so rotate away from finished plays to get more advantages. So, like, a, the, you know, the core one here was whenever you got that first tower and you followed Caitlyn, it's okay to push the wave up to the second tower, and if Misfortune's just kind of lingering around there, it's okay to wait and try to make a play on the Misfortune like you did to kill her. Once you kill that Misfortune, the play's done. You're not going to get that tower because it's too dangerous for you to go up and auto it when Nautilus is just sitting there. There were other people missing off the map. I think Jax and Akali were both missing, so they could have been rotating there. Caitlyn had no mana. And dragon was up. So I probably would have rotated down and gotten the dragon before you even killed Misfortune. Uh, I think it was just kind of lucky that Misfortune walked out of position to die right there. 
Um, but certainly after you kill Misfortune, then you need to rotate down and get the dragon. And it's important, even if it's something like Water Dragon, you're like, well, it's not that much of an advantage, who cares? You need to stack up dragons as fast as you can because you don't know what the next dragon's going to be. And the faster you kill one dragon, the faster you get the next dragons. So if you get Water Dragon, then Infernal's next, then you would get it in another six minutes, right? Whereas if you wait an additional four minutes before you get in, um, Water Dragon, then you'll have to wait ten minutes before you get Infernal. So you need to get those dragons as fast as you can so that you stack them and you move on and you get the next one um, as fast as you can. So, Okay, that's going to be it. I think this is going to be a lot to work on. So, uh, you know, it should give you plenty, plenty to think about. Um, you know, I think the main one, the main things are just communicating with your team, whether it's pinging them back, letting them know when you're going to go in. You know, that's another thing. Just ping like a couple of times to let them know you're going to go in as Lee so they can be ready to follow. So ping when you're going in, ping people back. Um, watch your mini map more. Think carefully about what your team needs to do to win. Like what, how do you set up towers? How do you set up barons? How do you get vision and set up bush baiting in the jungle? Like these are all different options you can do, but you need to have a plan and you need to try to go for it. So just constantly look at your mini map and think, okay, what's the next thing we can do to get the biggest advantage possible? Um, so do that instead of just, you know, farming camps and uh, just letting your team wander around. Like it worked out because you were really far ahead, but there are a lot of games where it's not going to work out. So, you know, you want to make sure that you get everyone on the same page and deprioritize those jungle camps if you're really far ahead. Like I said, just get the jungle camps if you're waiting on stuff. If there's no dragon, if you already have Baron kind of under control, um, but you're just not feeling like you want to try to bait it, then you can do a couple jungle camps. But when you're that far ahead, you need to just try to just crush them and just end that game as fast as you can. Okay, that's going to be it. Thank you very much. As always, I really appreciate it, uh, Ace DJ. Ace is also a member. If anyone out there wants to become a member, I have it linked here. Um, it's a lot of fun. We play normals on Tuesday. It gives you a chance to practice, uh, you know, some of your favorite champions and just to come out, be on the stream, uh, and join the wonderful community. So if you're interested in that, you could click on the link. It's just five dollars a month. You get to play every Tuesday as much as you want. You get discounts on um, coaching sessions if you're interested in that. And you get access to the member only Discord where people hang out, talk about their days, share pictures of their pets. Uh, just have a lot of fun. So we're just building a wonderful, awesome community on the channel. And if you want to be a bigger part of that community, um, you can become a member and just come hang out. Um, a lot of members don't even play on Members Night. They just like supporting the channel. Sometimes they just hang out on the Discord. Um, so you don't have to play every Tuesday to enjoy it. But Ace does get to come out, um, at least get a couple of games with us the last few weeks. And that's been a lot of fun uh, getting to hang out with him. So if you want to join the fun too, just click the link. Um and then down here, it's just run through PayPal, one of the most trusted um, payment processors in the world. It's accepted everywhere. You can do it from your phone. Just $5 a month. No contract fees, no signups. Cancel anytime you want. Um, just as long as you want to support the channel, you can stay. You know, if for some reason you need that money down the line, you can always uh, leave and reallocate that money elsewhere. But I just use it through PayPal because um, it really helps me a lot with the bookkeeping. And I use the uh, recurring payments just so I don't have to try to hunt people down every month to figure out you know, if they want to do the $5 or not. So anyways, thank you very much. Have a good day, and I'll see you next time.